Most people who are searching for answers on the internet for psychogenic non-epileptic seizures are asking about what it is and what causes it. And I've, I've come to my own easy to understand definition uh, of psychogenic non-epileptic seizures as an event equivalent to an earthquake where there is an immense buildup of stress under the surface and there is a rebound and those uh, seizures are the rebound. There's only so much stress that we can take on to ourselves and not process before that stress has to be released in one way or the other. And it's a, a method of self-preservation. Now that what causes it is similar answer. Of course, it's a buildup, but there are events that happen initially in order for that stress to start. And what happens when different events happen in our life that we're not prepared for, not equipped for, um, we go into three different modes. Uh, we either fight, we we have the fight or flight, or we freeze. And if we are not equipped psychologically to handle a situation, as many people aren't, because trauma is the common denominator with PNES, most people are not equipped to handle what happens that causes the trauma. And if we do not evolve past that freeze point, we will continually um, put on ourselves and on our minds that stress we will be absorbing stress. We will be using interventions that are are shaping our minds and shaping our brains um, to react to stress in a way that is not healthy for it. It's not productive. We're not productively processing the information that is coming into our world. We're not able to see situations for what they are frequently and be able to determine whether or not those are healthy situations to stay in. Uh, a lot of us just, we don't have the tools. When we're young, which is when a lot of the traumas happen, when we're young, we don't have the tools to handle uh, the situations that come into our world, whether it's abuse or um, death. Uh, there's such a variety of things that cause that initial stunt in our emotional growth. But unfortunately, we resort to things like uh, withholding our emotions, conflict avoidance, uh, withdrawing, and I can relate to all of those um, because that was my MO. I didn't know how to process my emotions and it was, it was a scary situation to be in to not know what to do with my emotions, so I became um, a stoic. I didn't show my emotions, I just held it in. And if I would feel tears coming up, I would swallow them back down, almost physically swallow those tears back down, instead of allowing my body to do what it needed to do, which was to release it. So those negative interventions, um, have a negative effect on our brains and how we process the information. But there is a way to retrain our brains to get new tools and get new results. Now a lot of people have a stigma against um, psychotherapy, but if you look at the root of what the word is, just like if you look at the root of most things, you'll see the real truth of it. Uh, psyche means soul. Pathology, uh, psych psychopathology. Pathology means suffering. Those are the Greek roots of the word, and ology means the study of. So when people go into psychotherapy, what they're really doing is trying to get to the root of their suffering soul. And we don't have the tools to successfully live with our um, processing, being able to process what we're suffering with, even sometimes to even accept the fact that we are suffering. So we need a guide. We need somebody who has the tools. And that's, for me, in my journey, that's when I recognized that I didn't have the tools to handle 
what life was throwing at me or what life had thrown at me and doing more of the same was just getting me more of the same results which was not good other things that are helpful uh, in recovery are medications um, some people need that that extra uh, help some people do really well on antidepressants but be sure to see somebody who is specialized psychiatrists are the doctors of psychology as far as the pharmaceuticals go so they're going to be the ones that are best equipped to handle which medication to try you on and to get you know the right cocktail if necessary going to a general practitioner isn't always the best choice especially when it comes to things of the mind uh, and emotional processes it's just not their it's not their specialty it's not what um, you would do if you were going you know you wouldn't go to a psychologist if you hurt your foot so why go to a medical doctor if you need help with your emotional processing the other things we can do that are not uh, medication and psychotherapy but are equally beneficial um, in, in some sense or some circumstances that's all we may need is the extra boost but things that practices um, to help us take care of ourselves a little bit better take a multivitamin start taking a multivitamin a b12 uh, fish oil those are things that will all help your physiological um, state and when we feel good we can emotionally benefit from that find an excuse to take a walk just do it once don't set out these huge grandiose plans of walking you know three times a week even just go out and take a walk today and after your walk record how you feel or just think about how you feel take a moment what I started to do was to journal and um, create a little record of how different things that I was doing in my life um, people that I would have interactions with on a regular basis, places I would go, and I just started recording how I was feeling and what any kind of emotional or physiological effect those interactions had on me. Um, part of the recovery from PNAS, and it's a very big part, is accepting that the reason we have PNES, especially if it's purely from a stress related, it's not linked to anything um, from like true neurology as far as frontal lobe uh, lesions or epilepsy, but when it is completely a stress related uh, physiological effect, then we have to recognize and accept that we're in this place that we're at because we didn't have the tools and I didn't have the tools to get the job done to live a happy and successful productive life and accepting that was a lot harder than you'd think because the original um, feeling that I had was that I was a failure and then some some way I had failed at being a grown-up <laughs> or being um, being a mother or being whatever I mean I had failed because I couldn't live the same life that everyone else seemed to be able to do so effortlessly but then in accepting that I started to make leaps and bounds once I was able to say that I just wasn't equipped to handle what I had experienced um, there was some guilt and shame associated with being a failure so I tried to do away with those terminologies and just reframe it and get away from labels altogether uh, for as long as you can and when I was able to do that just recognize that I just didn't have the tools I also recognized that there were people who did I listened to an audiobook and I did a lot of there's so much on YouTube obviously um, but I listened to a lot of uh, Eckhart Tolle and I'll put a link he has a book called The Power of Now and it was really there was so much that I got from it and it's like with anything I mean even with the videos you take what you want and you leave the rest and that's the intention of the videos it's not a cure-all for everybody I'm 
sharing whatever I can to try to help um, with my experience to relate and those who can relate to me maybe there's something within my story something within what I did that can help you so Eckhart Tolle um, there's a neurologist or neuropsychologist, uh, Dr. Daniel Amen, and um, Melody Beattie. They are three that I really looked at when I was learning new tools. And what I really appreciate about each of them is their personal journeys that got them to where they are. I can relate to some element of their stories. And because I was able to relate, it was easier for me to to grasp the concept of applying what they did to work uh, for me as well and I know that not everything that I say is going to be helpful um, but there might be some element that you can implement um, or that you can even grasp the concept of implementing you know as being feasible for you applicable for you the goal within this is that there are ways to advance your recovery and it's not just one direction you're searching now for answers and that is so instrumental it's going to play such a huge part in your recovery because you want to change your circumstances the next step is being willing to do anything to get the results that you want set the goal and commit to doing anything, making any changes necessary to get to your final outcome. And celebrate along the way. It's really important to see, and that's why I document and journal, because I can see now that it has been such an incredible journey and how many things I've, I've learned through it, how many people I've talked to. And even if this video reaches one person, then I feel like I've accomplished something that I can heal because I'm sharing my healing. I can heal because I'm using my experience to help others to, to recover from something that is catastrophic to our lives and to help reframe it, to see that it doesn't have to be the end of your life entirely, just the end of a chapter of a life with a little break for you to rewrite how things are, are going to play out from here. It can be a beautiful life. It's just a new day. It's a new purpose. There are things that we're limited in, but there are now things that we're able to do that we weren't before. So um, I will put the links to the books that I mentioned below. And um, please feel free to leave any comments. And I'm really grateful for all the feedback that I get.